Hello everybody, it's been a while but I'm back now with a review of the Alienware 510M mouse. So let's do a quick unboxing and I'll go over all of its features with you. Now the reason I got this mouse was because I was in the market for a wired mouse, preferably with some cool RGB, and is a little bit simpler to use than my wireless Logitech mouse that I've had for years. This one has less buttons but it still has up to 10 configurable buttons. And it also has a big benefit of using Alienware Command Center to do its configurations, which is something I have to have installed on my Dell G15 laptop anyways. The mouse has an ambidextrous shape, but if you're left-handed, you're going to have a hard time pressing the buttons on the left. On the bottom, there's a switch that adjusts the looseness of the scroll wheel. The cord feels nice. It has what feels like a braided outer covering, and it's very long at uh, 2 meters according to the specs. I would have to say the mouse looks much better than it does in the online pictures. So here's the mouse with the RGB lights on. Right now I just have it cycling through colors. And in person it looks really good. I'm not sure if you can pick it up in the video, but the colors transition very well. There's no light bleed through the plastic. And there's actually a lot of different lighting settings which I'll go over in the setup section. So this is how my hand naturally rests on there. It feels very comfortable for my mouse grip, and my thumb naturally sits on this rubber pad that's on the side next to the three buttons. Hopefully this rubber pad doesn't get dull and nasty later. The thumb buttons are really easy to reach, but I do have some trouble hitting the side buttons with my index finger. So here it is side by side with my Logitech G602 that I've been using for years. The weight of my Logitech mouse with batteries is 5.6 ounces. This whole mouse is 4.7 ounces with the cord. But since normally you don't feel the weight of the cord, here's the weight of just the mouse portion, 3.7 ounces. Now the RGB brightness isn't configurable, but it's a pretty good match to my Dell G15 laptop as you can see here. So here we are in Alienware Command Center. This is where you change the settings for the mouse. If you don't already have one, it'll add an FX tab. I already had one because of my keyboard and that's what shows up first, but if you don't have a configurable keyboard, it should probably pop up with this, with the mouse picture on it. Uh, so let's start with the settings. So as you can see here, you can change the polling rate, uh, switch the buttons, change your double click and scroll speeds. Uh, there's five configurable DPI settings. It goes up by hundreds. And this is uh, changed by this button. It's a toggle switch that goes up and down uh, by default. Uh, you can configure the liftoff distance. There's some set ones, but you can also do some calibration on it. Here's uh, where you can update the firmware. And we're back to the normal setting screen. Now let's head over to the lighting tab. I like to keep mine on spectrum because it's the what I keep my keyboard on. Now the annoying thing is they both have spectrum settings for the keyboard, but they're not synced in any way. So your mouse and your keyboard colors won't be changing at the same time or to be the same color. I think they actually have probably different people working on it because look at this, it says spectrum and tempo and I have it slow, but for the keyboard settings, spectrum, it has the brightness, and it has duration instead of tempo. So I don't know, I had to set this one to high duration, basically the same as low temp slow tempo, and it kind of changes colors around the same time. But you can see all the settings here. There's morph. It'll change between these two colors slowly. There's pulse, which is one color. You can choose a color and it'll just pulse that color. Uh, you can set it to just one color that's always on and switch the brightness. Breathing is only one color, but it turns on and off uh, slowly. Spectrum is what I keep it on. Basically, it'll go through all the colors, um, how, depending on how fast you want it, but it'll just kind of switch between them. There's the static blue default, which is just this blue color, which just stays on. 
color wave is pretty cool. You can see how advanced these uh, color strips are because it will go different colors uh, very seamlessly on the strips here. Thing is, it doesn't do it for the Alienware logo though. That can only do one color, I guess. This is the blue logo that only lights up the Alienware logo on the bottom. But I'm gonna leave that as Spectrum because that's what I like with the slow tempo. And finally, let's go to the macros. Now this is kind of unintuitive, but here's the macros, all the macros are installed, uh, which is the same as everything under my macros. So if you want, for instance, to disable a button, that's this one, you'll have to drag it over and you can just drop it on one of these and it'll copy it. For instance, I'll put it on here and disable that. Now by default, this is the uh, sniper mode button, so it lowers your DPI, so the uh, mouse cursor moves slower. So right now it's the normal speed. If I hit the uh, sniper mode, this is how fast it goes. So you have mouse button left click, right click. Uh, this is button three. Uh, this is four and five. I don't know which one's which, but four and five are one of those. Uh, this one actually defaults to the scroll, but in button form. Uh, it's kind of funny, but you can press the up button to scroll up and down button to scroll down in like web pages and stuff. But of course they're all configurable. Um, this toggle switch is also configurable. There's the up switch and then the down switch. Now if you do program this toggle switch, you won't be able to use the uh, DPI settings right here. You'll have to open this app and then change them in order to uh, change the DPI settings on the fly. So uh, if you want to add your own, you can go to create a new macro here and they have a couple of different kinds. So if you want to do a simple keystroke, for instance, you want to do copy, I'll name that copy, hit some keys. So control C is normally copy. You can choose how much you want to repeat it. None to make it toggle a while pressed or repeat how many times you save that. You want to save it to where uh, you can make a new folder to put, put into my macros, which I'll do now. And there's my copy button. So I can move this over, for instance, to change this one, which is just scroll up by default. And then maybe I want to make paste and I can put it on that one. But uh, let's take a look at the other stuff too. So that's for the simple keystrokes. Now the macro one's pretty interesting because you can actually record exactly what you want to do. So let's say type slowly, record, H, E, L, L, O, and then stop. Now see, it'll do exactly what you recorded. And you can save that. And you see it's here, type slowly. I can put it on there. So let's open up Notepad and I'm going to click on it. Oops, I had to save it first. And I'll click that button and it types it out just like I typed it. Now you can, this is really powerful because you can actually program whatever you want. Let's say you want to edit that, you can click this button right here and you can change however you want. You can take stuff out, you can change the delay, or you can just record a whole new one. Okay, let's check out the next macro. That's the shortcut macro. Uh, this one is made to open a program file folder computer internet address, it says. Uh, mainly you'll be using it for like programs. Um, so let's say you wanted to open up uh, Chrome. So you go to browse and you'll look for Chrome. You can click on that and hit save. So tell where I want to save it in my macros. And that's it. I can drag it to this button right here. Save that. 
when I press it, it'll open up Chrome. Okay, and the last bit is a text block, which is kind of interesting. It's similar to what I did in the macro section uh, when I typed something, but this one is main is made just for typing. So let's say I wanted to type Dell G15, but let's make it type like this. The repeat option was to none. I'll save that also to my macros. Where's my Dell G15? So I'm gonna put it on this button here. Let's see the theme. Let's open up Notepad again, and when I click, it'll automatically type exactly what I put in there. And I can do it multiple times just by clicking the button. And that's pretty much it. That's all the macros that they have on here that you can use. Uh, but it's a pretty powerful app. Uh, the only thing is this is kind of unintuitive here, the way that they did it. Now you can get rid of any of these uh, just by clicking on the X here and deleting it. So I'm gonna delete all of these because I don't use any of them. I reset the keys and I'm done. So all in all, I do enjoy using this mouse. It feels comfortable, it feels responsive. I like the RGB lights. It has a lot of configuration options. I wish that it could sync the lighting with my laptop so it would be the same light and change at the same time. That would be on the wish list. I wish my index finger can touch the uh, side buttons a little bit easier. But besides that, everything works well. So I'm not a pro gamer or a mouse expert or anything like that. So if you guys have any questions that I didn't go over, then just let me know in the comments and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Hope you guys all have a nice day. Until next time.